I live in a village, we'll walk down five minutes to a field, I'll open the field door, I will throw a ball and she'll be off a hundred miles an hour and she'll catch the ball. She'll walk two miles around that field. Welcome to Dog Cancer Answers, where we help you help your dog with cancer. Hello, friend. I'm Molly Jacobson, and today on Dog Cancer Answers, we have a true tale about a dog who has been thriving despite a cancer diagnosis. Lily is an English Cocker Spaniel living in the UK with her devoted owner, John McLeish. John has joined us to tell Lily's story and how she lives with anal gland adenocarcinoma. So let's just go back to the beginning. Tell me when you first noticed something was off with Lily. What time of year was it? What did you notice? How'd that go? I know it. I'll tell you exactly because I was thinking of it. 2020, February, lockdown. Oh. It was the very day of the lockdown. Oh, my goodness. I was in the field and I noticed her scooting really bad. And then she had a bit of diarrhea and I always check the poo. I used to do it with Hugsy the rabbit, check his poo. I knew then poo can tell you a lot of things. Very true. So I rang the vet and he says, uh, you can come down. He said, but you'll need to wait in the car park and we'll take Lily in. This was February 22. Sitting in the car park, 20 minutes, half an hour, 40 minutes. I'm thinking something's wrong here. And then they ring me. Hello, John. I says, yeah. She says, uh, got a little bit of bad news for you. She said, there's a bit of trouble in the anal gland. Oh, no. And we've known they've been emptied several times. We've found a little two centimetre growth. Now, it could be malignant or it could be adenocarcinoma. Mm -hmm. That word meant nothing to me at the time. That word haunts me these days. When I read other dogs on the, on the, on the Facebook, I think, God. So they said to me, look, we're happy to bring her in on Wednesday and we'll give her a test. The, what do you call it, the needle? A uh, fine needle aspirin. Fine needle, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So take her home at night. We'll give her an antibiotic and she'll be a bit more livelier. So we booked her in for the Wednesday. I got a phone call on the Tuesday saying we have to cancel the aspirin. We're now in total lockdown. Oh, no. So they give me a call every few weeks. How's Lily, John? I say, she's okay. I can't see a lump on the outside. I couldn't see nothing on the outside. And then uh, I thought, well, she's, she's not acting any different. Was she still having uh, bad poops, diarrhea? No, Was no. she still scooting on the ground? Or? Not at all. Okay. Not at all. And uh, I thought, have they, have they got it wrong? And then one of the vets said, with several conversations, and she said, look, John, it's a possibility. It could be benign. How is she acting? I said, like a two-year-old. Seriously, she's never she's But never how old was she really? She's acting like a two-year-old, but she was. At that time, she would have been 10. Okay. So 10, acting like a two-year-old, we're pretty happy. Yeah, pretty happy dog. So September comes and the lot, so we're in and out a lot. UK was terrible. You must have seen the mess ups they made here. They made big, big, serious mess ups with yeah. everything. Yeah. People dying that shouldn't have died, Molly. Animals dying that should never have died. Yeah. But that's, a, that's, that's another debate. <laughs> right. But that's another podcast. <laughs> that's another podcast. Let me get, um, <laughs> get all of some of these politicians. I'll tell them what happened. <laughs> <laughs> so in September, things seemed to quieten down. They did make their big mistake opening up rest jumps and the, the COVID just <clears throat> mushroomed 70-odd thousand people in a couple of weeks dead. Right. So again, back into lockdown. And she still hasn't had a fine needle aspirate. It's been since February to September and she still hasn't had an actual diagnosis? No, not at all. Oh so I goes back in September. They were ringing me up. By this time, I'm thinking they must be suffering in business. I thought they, they must be finding. And I used to joke, I said, why you're phoning me now is you need to get some money in. I says, look, I'm happy if you're happy and you know perfectly well that's what it needs to come out. She says, well, I'm capable of doing it. So we agreed it gets done. So uh, I take her down. They'd done the aspirate and they were going to keep her in. And they removed uh, a two-centimetre tumour. Okay. 
and uh, they did say it was a clean margins. However, it could come back. Right. Three days later, they got the results of the tumour adenocarcinoma. That's the way you say it, adenocarcinoma. 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 It may well come back. Yeah. It might not come back. So that was September 2020. And it was two centimetres when they first found it in February of that year, and then it was two centimetres when they removed it. So it hadn't really grown. Hadn't grown. Hadn't grown at all. Okay. So got the operation done. Uh, she was fine. A couple of days later, she was back out. She was doing her usual thing. And last December, about two weeks before Christmas, I was taking her to the groomers. I picked her up. And I put her in the car and I felt what she was. I thought about her fur. And my mind thought, no, I'll get her groomed and have a look. And I could see a lump coming out the side of her right anus. Okay. So I phoned the vet up and the vet said, nothing to worry about. She said, she's had the operation way back the year before. Okay. And I thought, no, I'm not accepting that as an answer. There's something there. Bring her in Wednesday. I went down on a Wednesday, lifted up her tail. I said, there, it's there. I could see it clearly. It was a few centimetres. And she said, mm, it looks like it. I'll do an aspirate. And then she says, uh, I'll let you know Friday. Now we're heading into the Christmas week. If it is, she said, I'll get her fitted in before Christmas. So get the bad news again on the Friday. However, bring her in the Monday and we'll do the operation. Took her in the Monday, done the operation. And uh, this is when it gets a, bit, a little bit complicated now because we're back into lockdowns again. Okay, so this is the end of 2021. You know that she's got a recurrence of adenocarcinoma, the yep. second surgery to take it out. Have they looked for metastasis yet? Right. Have they done scans? So I was told to bring her back four days later to get her stitches out. I pulls into the car park, and you've got to call them and tell them you're here. And this young vet came out, and it was raining. He says, right, you lift her tail, and I'll take her stitches out. Oh, right, in your car. Yeah, outside in the car park, I thought, no. You are about a 20th vet keenery guy I've seen in here in the last few months. I can't take it no more. Oh, it's so hard. I says, I'm not, I'm not letting you take stitches out in the car. Take her inside the building, I'll wait here. And they came back out. He says, oh, they're a bit tender still. Can you come back Friday? So I seen the vet on the Friday who performed the operation. And she says to me, yeah, I'll get the stitches out. She says, and dead, uh, pop back next week and we'll just check it as the, the wound's healing. And she never told me nothing else. So I went back the following week and I seen a young girl, 26, can't remember her name. And she said to me, uh, yeah, she's looking well. I've took her stitches out. She said, but did you get the bad news from the vet? I won't mention her name. Well, Marianne. Marianne just said that she took her stitches out and that was it. She said, there, well, we found some mystatic cancer in the sublumbar nodes. They'd done scans and they didn't tell you that they were doing scans. Yeah. So you didn't know that bad news was coming or any news was coming. Yeah. So I says, uh, well, what can we do? I mean, I'm standing at a car park and I felt sorry for her because like most of these young vets, they love animals they go to university, they get their degree, and before they know it, they're working in these veterinary places who have been bought out by companies who are looking for return on investments, and they just want these bets to go through as many animals as they possibly can. That's how I see it today. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, well, what, what is the next move? She says, well, really, I'll have to speak to a vet and see if we can dampen it down. That was the word she used, dampen it down. Dampen it down. So I gets in the car and I thought, I can't have this. And I started on the net and I came across the book by complete accident. The Dog Cancer Survival Guide. And something drew me to it and I read a few pages and I bought it straight away. And I thought, these people know exactly what they're talking about. So instead of starting reading a book from beginning to end... I started jumping in where it, it was with no lily, but then I went back again, and I still keep on coming back. It, it gets read most days, Molly, to be honest with you. I'll go back, I'll pick up something, maybe on the end, and then I'll have a look back through there and see what Dr. Dressler says, etc. No, and it's been, it's been an interesting journey. Yes, that's one way to put it. 
I paid the express, got that, and I thought, right, <laughs> back onto the vet. I said, I want to see a specialist. I said, uh, you can't dampen it down. Well, I've actually spoke to someone at the Willows, and he said he could do these operations with his eyes closed. I said, well, he must be a very good surgeon because it's right next to the aorta. I've looked at the structure of the dog. I said, it's very close to two arteries. I says, uh, but I'm willing to go. Can you get me booked in? Let me see what I can do. Two weeks later, they're not seeing anybody for four months. Mm-hmm. She said, they're only seeing emergencies only. Mm-hmm. I thought, right. So the Marianne vet rang me off. She knew I wasn't happy, so she must have went to her, her super Marianne, her supervisor, and she came back and says, look, I've found somewhere else, but you'll need to go as soon as they tell you to go. And I, I got a call one morning, I couldn't believe it. Is that John McLeish? Yes. You'll have to get down here tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. She said, the fee's £295. I said, Who, who's this? Is this someone I do business with? <laughs> she says, uh, we're a referral centre for Lily. And can you ask your vet to send all the details down? And I said, I'll be there. She said, the fee's £295. She says, and then we take it from there. And uh, that's how I started on the referral route. Mm -hmm. And that was back in January. Of this year, 2022. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I meant she, I told this bet I'm using the apple caps. Well, she was American, actually. She says, yeah, I've heard of them. She says, "Uh, but you you want to be doing chemotherapy, radiotherapy. She says, right, well, what we'll start with, we'll we'll start with chemotherapy. I said, hmm. That'll be £5,000. Right. You are insured, I says, yeah, but this is the second time Lily said this. I'll need to pay this myself because the insurance company stopped after, you know, if your dog breaks their leg and it breaks it again, then you pay for that again. Okay. And then we'll go on to radiotherapy, which could be 7000 So we're now up at 12000 So we're piling up money, Molly, without any... Lily's lying sleeping, and I said, I'll speak my mind sometimes, Molly, when I have to, but don't forget when people like myself are sitting in that situation, you are getting overwhelmed. Now, she had the scans in front of her, the scans that were done two weeks ago, so she knew where the lymph node mystasis was. So I I did say to her, I've got a few questions. So she said, so leave Lily here today, And what we'll do, we'll knock a few hundred pounds off the bill and we'll use the same sedative to scan her and then scan her legs. And I said, I don't want to leave her today because I was shocked. I was so overwhelmed. And I thought, when is she going to actually examine her? She said, have you any questions? I said, yeah, I would like you to have a look at her. So Lily got up and she patted her side. She said, yeah, a little bit of fat here opened her teeth up. Yeah, she said she looks well. Uh, I says, good. So I said, well, I've got a few questions for you. I've got some more questions for you. She says, fire away. I said, first of all, you got all the my own vet to send you a complete history. And the last thing on the history was the, the paw where she jumped out the car. I says, and really we've spent a lot of time discussing the paw and not the mystatic cancer. I do apologize, but you're still leaving her today. I says, no, I'm not. I'm going to go away and I'm going to think. Well, I wouldn't leave it too long. I says, well, I was getting a bit, when you're in that situation, you're in two minds, do I leave her, don't I leave her? I just got, I I didn't get the right feeling. I says, well, in front of you, because I stood up by this time, you've got our scans there, which were done two weeks ago. Now, surely these scans haven't changed in two weeks. Yeah, it could do. She's an older dog, don't forget. And I thought, right, okay, I'm still not too sure what to do. I'm glad I had a mask on because the tears were rolling down my face. I was getting blocked up. Mm, You were really upset. And uh, I said, I'll need to think about this. I'll really need to think what I'm doing. I said, the money isn't a question. My dog's health is. Lily's a living at the time to put her through the chemotherapy, the radiotherapy, I'm thinking selfishly of my own. I said, I've got two other pups as well. 
I say she gets on with them. I say she's not been showing any signs. I say I'm surprised after the operation two weeks ago that she's as lively as she is. Right, let's do a blood test. So I says, right, I, I gave her and I said, do a blood test. Because by this time I wanted out and uh, she said, well, I'll do the blood test then. And then she come back and she says, right, you still don't want to leave her? I says, definitely not. And I got in the car and I drove about 40 miles and I don't know how, it was my, I'm driving on a motorway. It was my, just, oh. And uh, I'll be honest with you, both of you, she wasn't happy that I took Lily away. I could tell. I could tell. And when I got to reception, she says it's 295 and 350 for the blood results. So the blood results come and they were the exact same as they were in December. So the director of the vet company who I go to, Ian, his name is, I knew when he was on and when he was off and when he was quiet. And I rang him the next night at quarter past seven and fair play, he gave me an hour and a quarter of his time. I explained everything that I explained to you Mm -hmm. and Ian, the vet director, said, it's disgraceful that she'd done a blood test. They've just took you for another £350. He said, I appreciate you, John. I've got to know you as a human being and not just somebody that brings his dog in. He says, you've put a lot into Lily. You've put a lot in. I've spent thousands on hugs on his teeth. Hugsy is your rabbit. God rest his soul. But he passed yeah. away last uh, last February. Yeah, he was eight. Eight. Okay. Eight year old. Yeah, he was. He was funny. I'll, I'll send you some pictures. He was. He was unbelievable. <laughs> so, Ian, he wrote to the referral center, but the referral center wrote back to him, and here is what they said. They had only suggested that I do a blood test, so she covered herself right away. If he doesn't want to pay the pay the nineteen thousand pound, we can offer lesser chemotherapy. Paladin, pa- pala, pala. Uh, Palladia, the at home chemotherapy pill. Palladia. Uh huh. Yeah, we can do that. We can do this. So I thought, Ian, my mind's made up. I'm not putting her through chemotherapy, radiotherapy. I am just not going that route. Because the way I feel now, Lily's 12 this year. She's too old. Her body wouldn't be able to take it. And I just thought, no, what I'm going to do, I'm doing the apple caps, CBD, fresh chicken, fresh steak, the best of meat. I would rather spend £19,000 on food for a dog (laughs) than put £19,000 worth of chemicals into the dog. Now, sometimes chemotherapy is the right choice you know for dogs for some people yeah but sometimes it's it's not molly i think if lily was two or four i would have went the chemotherapy route Mm -hmm. i wouldn't have gave it a second glance Mm -hmm. but i thought at her age and then when i seen a few people would say to me we had dogs drawn 10 11 and once we started giving them chemotherapy radiotherapy it killed them Mm. Yeah. And I have to say, just for the listeners who are in chemo or radiation or or are thinking about it, that typically the dogs can do well, but it really is an individual decision. And it's an individual decision for dogs. I've had dogs that I would happily do chemotherapy or radiation with. And then another dog who in at the same age with the same diagnosis, I would not have just because of all sorts of individual dog based or cancer based decisions yeah. so yeah. but in your case with lily just she's 12 and it was too much and it sounds to me and i i might be wrong about this john but it sounds like you also just like really didn't like this referral vet <laughs> i didn't i was i was very that maybe played into your decision a little bit it was in a room molly there was no windows there was over 200 specialist vets in this building, orthopedic surgeon, heart surgeons. I got the impression it was like a conveyor belt. Uh-huh. It just didn't feel warm. Did and not feel like right. It wasn't right for you and for Lily. It was not right for me. Mm-hmm. Now, if I'd have went maybe to Willows or Fitzpatrick's, they've got a good name in the UK, mm-hmm. chances are, Slim chances I would have 
maybe perhaps they'd have done the chemo, but I'm glad that I didn't do it. Yeah, I'm not questioning your decision, John. I'd never do that. No. No, I'm glad that I got enough information mm-hmm. out of the dog cancer guide book. Mm-hmm. Then I've had off her vets. It's gave me hope. Mm-hmm. It's gave Lily hope. Mm-hmm. I tell everybody about it. You know, people think I'm mad. But the sad thing, the sad thing is, sooner or later, she won't be here. Yeah. I said to that vet as well, before I left, I said, I've got, I've got, uh, should we get any questions? I says, I have. I said, uh, how long has Lily got left? Mm hmm. And she says, on the downside, nine months. On a good side, 14 months. That's more time than many dogs are given, but it's, of course, still far too short for any dog lover. We're going to take a short break, and then when we come back, I want to hear what you and Dr. Ian decided to do for Lily. Every Friday, the admins of our Dog Cancer Support Facebook group welcome new members with a message of support and two important Hawaiian words, aloha and kakua. You see, we are based in Maui, Hawaii, and the Hawaiian language is very much present in our everyday lives. You may have heard of the word aloha, which means several things here, including hello and goodbye, but also love. Aloha is an important part of the dog cancer support group where everyone is asked to be kind and loving and perhaps most important, non-judgmental. They are also asked to provide kakua, which is a Hawaiian word that means cooperation and help, especially of the unexpected kind. To be in a group on Facebook where you encounter kindness and unexpected help can sometimes feel a little bit like a miracle. And perhaps it is miraculous because we are all there because of our love for dogs. Please join us and experience the Aloha and Kakua for yourself. Go to dogcancersupport.com or search for the group called Dog Cancer Support in Facebook. And we're back with John McLeish telling us the story of his dog, Lily. So the oncology consult didn't go so well, and you went back to your favorite vet to regroup. What happened next? So Ian says, I get the impression, John, that you're thinking of the dog's health more than your own health, and you're not being selfish. He says, now, Lily said this for two years, John. He said it's very, very slow. It's slow. It could speed up. It could. We don't know. He says, uh, what would you like to do? He says, now, I will say to you, where the uh, two lymph nodes are that are infected, they're very close to the caudal artery oh. and the aorta. He said, take a very experienced vet with a lot of years' experience to go in and get them out without cutting an artery. Cut an artery, finished. Yeah, that's a very risky surgery. He said... Very risky, he says. So we're, we're now looking, John, he says, we're looking all Lily's history. He says, uh, I'm going to side with you. He said, because you need to come back every six or eight weeks to get the other anal gland emptied. I thought, right, okay then. He said, well, if we see any change, then maybe we can do something else. So two months passed, I went down to see him. And I say, I'm specifically asking for you because the turnover in vets in the UK, Molly, is unbelievable. Mm. Uh, the highest suicide rate in the UK, veterinary surgeons last year. Same in the US. I don't know if they were the highest in the entire United States for veterinary sur- but but we have a terrible, terrible crisis in the veterinary health professional community here as unbelievable. well. Unbelievable. They're under so much stress. They are so so overworked and there's a lot of need that they have that we're not aware of (laughs) as as people. Unbelievable. Yeah. So you're aware of that. So I said, well, what we'll do, we'll bring Lily in every two months, six to eight weeks, because that's when she gets her anal gland. We're getting emptied then. And uh, two months passed, I went down and he said, what have you done? I says, what do you mean, what have I done? He says, John, I expect to see a difference. I said, well, I'll tell you what I've done. 
and I have mentioned in previous conversations. He meant she's stable and he was expecting to see the anal gland tumors progressing. Yeah, he, he thought she was going to go down the hill. But she hadn't. She was just the same. Yeah, I said, Ian, I'm mentioning to you, I've mentioned to oncologists, I've mentioned to the veterinary girls, young 26, 27-year-old vets, apple caps. Oh. No one's heard of them. Dr. Dressler's supplement, yeah. Well, what's that, he said? It's his formula. What's that? So I explained it to him. He says, oh, are you, are you using that? I says, yeah. I said, and I'm also using CBD. Mm -hmm. I used to manufacture CBD in, in Los Angeles when I brought it back to the UK. I said, I've, I've cut out kibble. So he said, well, keep doing what you're doing, Johnny says, uh, and I'll see you in another couple of months. So another two months passed, and uh, he said, the pause fine. He said, uh, there's a little bit of slight raise in the uh, lymph node, bit of no concern. So three weeks ago, we were back for, that would be the third time since January. January of this year. It's October 2022 and January of 2022 is when you saw your vet, this Ian vet, for the first time. She had the first operation September 20. That was the first tumour gone. And then it came back at the end of 21. Okay. And then they removed it in December 21. Okay. And then uh, since then, I go back every, as I say, it could be six weeks, it could be eight. I know when I see the scooting, I pick it up and we go down and we see Ian. He'll empty a glance. So we were there three weeks ago. <laughs> so I said, how are we now? He says, John, she looks good. She's actually 14.2 kilograms. She's putting weight on. Oh, wow. Which is another boost, really. He says the lymph node on the last, we've seen you two months ago, mm -hmm. it's just a little bit large. He said, but as time goes on, it will get bigger, and my concern would be it may press on the spine. Uh -huh. But we might be able to do some deep bulking, or I might give you like a laxative, mm -hmm. make her poo smooth. Mm -hmm. I says, well, Ian, I've been using Glandex that I found off a Cocker Spaniel breeder way back last year. Mm -hmm. She moved back from Australia with her dogs to the UK and she mentioned Glandex. And I give Lily two Glandex a day, one with her breakfast and one in the evening. And that's been taking care of the, the poo? Yeah. So she's doing well? Yeah, yeah. Is today, mid-October 2022, when you look at Lily, does it feel like she has cancer? The only telltale signs, really. She doesn't look like she's got cancer. I know she's got it. Of course. And I see her. I'll give you an example. I live in a village. We'll walk down five minutes to a field. I'll open the field door. I will throw a ball, and she'll be off 100 miles an hour, <laughs> and she'll catch the ball. <laughs> she'll catch the ball. She'll walk two miles around that field, but by the time we come up the field, you can tell she's an old dog. She's slow. Mm -hmm. She'll come in, she'll look for her treats, and she'll have a sleep. And then I give her a wee third meal in between. I give her some salmon oil, CBD oil, and a little bit of chicken about one o'clock. Two o'clock, she's back out in the churchyard running about chasing <laughs> balls. She just needed a little nap. Half past four. She's done what she's done this morning. She's out chasing balls, carries the ball two miles <laughs> back to the house. Oh, my goodness. Now, before we came on here, I was away in business the day I came back. My friend looks after her. She brought her back. She said, she's in a great John, Where does she get the energy? She's been out for four hours with six other dogs, and she's had a good nap this afternoon. I haven't fed her because I know you're on special diets with her. So I got the steak out. I got the chicken out already cooked. <laughs> steak, chicken, and some vegetables. And we went over to the churchyard about quarter past seven before this time. Had a little wander. And now she's lying, as you can see her. Yeah. It's been a good day. Yeah. She's taking her rest at the end of a very good day. Yeah. It sounds to me like you know she has cancer but no one else would know by looking at this dog. No. This is an amazing story. But what I've got to stop doing is 
I worry about my, all my friends tell me you spend too much time you look more ill than Lily looks on the floor a lot of weight because I worry about her yeah this is a really important thing I wanted to talk to you about actually because Lily is clearly an amazing dog and you have worked so hard on helping her through this you've done so much and been such a fierce advocate during extreme dog cancer is terrible to navigate to begin with navigating dog cancer during a worldwide pandemic when you can't even be in the room with the veterinarians as they examine do the fine needle aspirate take the blood test whatever it is that they're doing you're not there with her this is very stressful so your stress levels have been as many of our listeners have also been extreme and through the roof. And I really want to congratulate you on navigating that with relative grace and ease, and also really sticking by your guns in terms of your own intuitive feeling about who you trust and how you want to work and that you found the right vet and you kept going and finding the right relationship, I think, is one of the most important things that we can do as dog lovers is to put together a team that we know we have confidence in because the worst cases in my experience are the ones where someone afterwards feels like they made decisions based on half information or not enough information or they didn't ask the right questions or ask the wrong questions because they didn't trust their team. And so I just really want to congratulate you on really making sure that you trusted your team. Whatever that means for the listener, that importance of working with someone who really vibes with you and your dog is so important. Yeah, it's so important. Yeah, so yay on that. And then I want to ask you about how you are managing your own personal stress. Because, I mean, you've been reading Dr. Dressler's book, but did you read the chapter on how important it is to take care of yourself? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I do what most humans would do. They'd be saying, yeah, I've got to do that. I've got to look after right. myself. And 10 minutes later, my focus is back with yes, the dog Yes, exactly, again. <laughs> exactly. I wonder what your best advice is for others who have a dog cancer diagnosis. Like, what do you wish everybody knew? First of all, I would recommend the book. That is a priority. And apple caps, a priority. Now, on top of that, Molly, as well, you get the odd thing that will say, oh, this is all about Dr. Dressler making a fortune out of Amazon selling apple caps. I've picked a few comments like that up. So I thought, no, I can tell. I can tell by looking at both of you how you are as individuals. <laughs> When people are talking like this, we're not just talking, we're sharing from the heart. What I'm saying tonight is coming from my heart, not my head. Mm -hmm. And what I'm seeing, I know what's coming back, like spirituality, call it whatever you like, the vibration's good. So I, I had a look at these few people that were making out, no, no, don't buy that book, it's, don't do this, don't do that, try this book, try that book. Well, I did, I thought I'll spend £6, £7, get a book. Absolute waste of time. They had nothing in it at all, no value. And I thought if people would only just latch on to any dog with cancer, any dog with cancer, and read that book and take every piece of information that you can get, whether it means sitting down on a Saturday afternoon when you've got half an hour or an hour and you're bored and you're looking for something to do, I'll always open that book up and I'll see something that I might not, I might have seen it a few months ago. I'll see it in a different light and I'll think, right, mm, let's try this. Mm -hmm. Because it's so, how long did the book take Molly to write? Oh my goodness. Well, Dr. Dressler researched it for years, worked with people in his clinic for years, took him at least a year to write it, the first edition, and then two, three years to do the second edition and um, yeah, and we're currently working on updating this that edition right now. And it takes a tremendous amount of work and lots of people are involved. It's not just Dr. Dressler and Dr. Ettinger. You know, it's all of these other veterinarians who review it and help to do the thinking. And yeah, no, it's a lot of work that's frankly, they're not compensated for in any <laughs> royalties are not an earner. <laughs> 
and I think people like myself, Molly, as well. Now we do we do we do a lot of worrying about we're animals. We we are animal lovers. And I might read a passage, you know, and I'm not sure I'll forget about it in two days' time. But if I read it again, maybe in two or three weeks' time, it's a whole ball game. It's as if I've seen it for the first time. Yeah. It starts yeah. hitting the head. Now, let's mm-hmm. try this now. Now, I didn't see much about mushrooms in the book. There in chapter 13, Dr. Dressler talks about mushroom-derived polysaccharides. Right. It starts on page 182. Mm-hmm. So today, it's more common to call them medicinal mushrooms. Right. And he also talks about cordyceps, cordyceps in chapter 11 as a really good supplement for dogs who have heart problems as a result of chemo. Lines, mane. Yep. Those are mentioned in uh, in chapter 13. There's quite a few. And apple caps give you my experience on them. And my experience has been the work and the work well. They work well. She takes two in the morning. She gets two at night. She's never had any upset stomachs, nothing like that. And she looks forward to them. What I was going to try doing was give her some of the lion's mane or the other one, what's the one, tail, turkey tail. Mm -hmm. But what I don't want to do is start banging all this too many, what's the saying? Just too many. You don't want to over supplement. Correct. That's it. Yeah, that's wise. I mean- There is such a thing as doing too many. And think about it this way. If you went to your physician, your human physician, and they said to you, look, you should be on 12 medications all at the same time. And these 14 supplements, you would think that's a lot. Yeah. (laughs) That's a lot because that's a lot. Yeah. There's, you know, everything should be done under veterinary supervision and these decisions should be made. You should not do more than you need to do. Right. Yeah. In general, we should. Yeah. Because you can throw the body out of balance by doing too much of a good thing can turn into a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. John, this has been such an amazing conversation. I so appreciate you taking your time and sharing your story and your love for Lily with us. I am so thrilled that you've just worked so hard. I want you to take really good care of yourself. When you go on those walks, I want you to pretend that you're one of Lily's dog friends and be carefree. That's my homework for you. Thank you very much. (laughs) See the world the way Lily sees it. You can take a break every day. I want you to take a break from being John and be like, I don't know, what's your name? What's your dog name? (laughs) What's my dog name? I'll need you to think. (laughs) (laughs) I'll need you to think. Okay. But, uh, the sad day will come, Molly. I, th- I think what I've got to start doing, and I've tried it in the last few weeks, is get more positive. That's right. It's today. She's here today. Enjoy her today. Right. And I'll get some friends in the village who'll say, John, why put yourself through all the worry and anxiety? Because it's not going to change a thing. Yeah, it's not going to change anything. He said, sometimes we felt like saying to you last year, You are going to die before Lily goes because you are not eating properly. Your mind's, you're too focused on it. You're you're too focused on the negativity. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta take good care of yourself so that as Lily has a good day, you can have a good day too. That's, that's. I really appreciate you being here today. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you, listener. Lily has been a champ through delayed treatment due to the COVID pandemic, two surgeries on her anal glands, many vet appointments, and a minimalist treatment plan that has kept her happy and comfortable for over a year now, now that we're in early 2023. Lily and John's story is a testament to how important it is to trust your gut and do what feels right for your individual dog, as well as the importance of building a veterinary care team that resonates with you. To learn about all the different therapies available across the treatment spectrum, visit our website, dogcancer.com. We also invite you to join our Facebook group, Dog Cancer Support, where you can network with other dog lovers, learn about their experiences, and find out how they found vets and oncologists they love. I'm Molly Jacobson, and from all of us here at Dog Podcast Network, I'm wishing you and your dog a very warm aloha. Thank you for listening to Dog Cancer Answers. If you'd like to connect, please visit our website at dogcancer.com. 
or call our listener line at 808-868-3200. And here's a friendly reminder that you probably already know. This podcast is provided for informational and educational purposes only. It's not meant to take the place of the advice you receive from your dog's veterinarian. Only veterinarians who examine your dog can give you veterinary advice or diagnose your dog's medical condition. Your reliance on the information you hear on this podcast is solely at your own risk. If your dog has a specific health problem, contact your veterinarian. Also, please keep in mind that veterinary information can change rapidly. Therefore, some information may be out of date. Dog Cancer Answers is a presentation of Maui Media in association with Dog Podcast Network.